So far, we've looked at the motion and mechanics of objects that move largely in a straight line along some plane. This is called rectilinear motion. In the case of circular motion, the object moves around a circular path in one direction. There are many objects that vibrate or move back and forth about the same path. This type of motion is called oscillatory motion. Examples of this include a pendulum on a grandfather clock, a tuning fork, a swing on a playground, speakers, and strings on a guitar. The physics of vibrations or oscillatory motion can be described using the concepts of Newtonian physics that have been explored in the previous chapters. So the study of oscillatory motion builds upon the previous knowledge. Vibrations have three important characteristics, which can be understood by considering the following animation of an idolized spring mass system. An idolized system is one that does not have any friction or energy loss while in motion. Left alone, the mass will not move and the net force is zero and the spring mass system is said to be in equilibrium. Now if we grab the mass, pull it down to some distance below its equilibrium, then release it, it will start to oscillate about its equilibrium position. Firstly, we see that the mass vibrates up and down over the same path through its center or equilibrium position. This type of motion is called oscillatory motion or harmonic motion. Secondly, the vibration or oscillation is regular in time and repeats itself in regular time intervals. This type of motion is called periodic motion. Finally, the mechanism that causes oscillatory motion is a force called the restoring force that is proportional to the displacement of the object from its equilibrium. If you try to pull a stiff spring or an elastic band far, you notice that the further you stretch it, the harder it is to stretch. So there's some force that tries to oppose that stretch. This force increases the more stretch there is. When you let the stretch material go, this force restores the material back to its original length, hence the term restoring force. The restoring force is a property of the spring or elastic material and is evident when you pull the mass down from its center position. Oscillatory motion, where the only force at work is the restoring force, is called simple harmonic motion. The moment we let the mass go, it begins to move upwards towards its equilibrium passes its equilibrium and up to some maximum height before turning around and heading back down. It continues to move to where it was pulled at the other end of the oscillation. This completes one cycle of the oscillation. The mass then moves up again and continues the motion in another cycle. If there's nothing to stop or slow the mass down, the mass will continue to move through the cycle indefinitely in simple harmonic motion. Let's look at the position of the mass as it oscillates about its equilibrium position in this displacement time graph. We can trace out the position of the mass as a function of time. The displacement of the mass is its position relative to the equilibrium which is set to zero along the y-axis. This is shown as a red arrow that represents the displacement vector. So positive displacement is above equilibrium a negative displacement is below equilibrium. As the displacement is traced out as a function of time, we can see that there is a maximum displacement in the positive direction and in the negative direction. We call this maximum displacement the amplitude. The amplitude is a measure of distance, so it has a unit of length, the SI unit of which is a meter. Within one cycle of motion, the mass goes through both the maximum positive and the maximum negative displacement. So what is the total distance that the mass covers in one cycle as a function of the amplitude? When we look at the time scale, which is a horizontal scale on the graph, we see that the oscillation repeats itself at regular time intervals. This time interval is called the period and its symbol is the capital letter T. So the period is the time it takes to complete one full cycle. Because the period is a measure of time, it has the SI unit of the second. Another measurement of oscillation is the frequency of the oscillation. 
The frequency f is the number of cycles completed within one second. Frequency is generally expressed in units of hertz. So an oscillation of 5 cycles per second has a frequency of 5 hertz. It can be seen from the definition of period and frequency that the two are related. In fact, the period is the inverse of the frequency. So an oscillation that has a frequency of 2 hertz completes 2 cycles within 1 second. Therefore, it takes each cycle only half a second to complete, so it has a period of half a second. So if an oscillation has a period of 0.25 seconds, then what is the frequency of the oscillation? When we look at the displacement of the mass as it oscillates, we see that it traces out what looks like a sinusoidal wave as a function of time. This similarity can be visualized when we compare the motion of the oscillating mass with the motion of an object in circular motion. The vertical displacement of the oscillating mass follows the vertical projection of the radius of the circle at any instant in time. The length or the magnitude of the radius is equal to the amplitude of the oscillation. The period of oscillation is the same as the period of rotation. So we can use this analogy to provide a mathematical description of oscillatory motion. Let's start with a mathematical equation for the sine function, which is sine theta multiplied by the radius or amplitude of vibration. To use this function, we need to convert from the phase of space to the physical space by replacing the angle with time. We can do this by using the conversion factor called the angular speed, omega. We've seen the angular speed before when we were introduced to circular motion. The angular speed is the rate of change of the angle with respect to time. It is a measure of how fast the angle changes and is given by the units of radians per second. Rearranging this formula gives us the angle theta been equal to omega multiplied by time. So the vertical displacement can now be written as a function of time instead of angle. The oscillation can complete one full cycle within one period. So the angular speed of the oscillation is equal to 2 pi radians divided by the period. Since the period is equal to the inverse of the frequency, the angular speed can also be written in terms of the frequency. Hence omega is often called the angular frequency in oscillatory motion. In a sine function, the displacement is zero when the time is zero. But in oscillatory motion, what displacement does the mass begin at? In oscillatory motion, the mass does not begin to oscillate until we move it away from its center position and release it. So the mass starts oscillating from its displacement at the amplitude. The function for an oscillator starts at one quarter of a cycle away from a sine function. One quarter of a cycle is half of pi. Of course, a phase difference of half of a pi in a sine function is a cosine. So the general formula for simple harmonic motion is the displacement being equal to the amplitude of vibration multiplied by the cosine of the angular speed multiplied by time. In summary, simple harmonic motion occurs when an object vibrates in a fixed path about an equilibrium position in the absence of any external forces. The displacement of the oscillation can be described by trigonometric means because of its periodic repetition. The rate of vibration is described by the angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of oscillation or equal to 2 pi divided by the period of oscillation. Frequency has the units of hertz, and period has the units of seconds.